In the 2015 Paris Accord, governments committed to bring the net amount of greenhouse gas emissions down to zero midway through this century. Here's the problem. How do we measure progress? We need a uniform, transparent, trustworthy accounting model that's consistent for everyone. In essence, we need a common planetary carbon ledger. Who would maintain such a ledger? Or is this a case for a decentralized model offered by blockchains? To discuss this, we're joined by Masamba Tiyoye from the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, commonly known as the UNFCCC. He's also the co-chair at the Climate Change Coalition. And we also welcome Martin Weinstein, founder and executive director at the Open Earth Foundation. Welcome to you both. Hi. So, Masamba, why don't we start with you? Please talk us through some of the high-level global challenges that exist in terms of measuring and accounting for this massive collective undertaking. Thank you. Um, one of the most important challenge that is faced when it comes to um, climate policy making is to be able to measure the impact of uh, climate action or to measure the, uh, to account for GSG emitted by an, an entity. Um, this is the basis for developing policies. For example, if you want to incentivize, you need first to, to account. Now what happened is um, there are type of accounting that are quite well um, known, well established, um, where actually new digital technology can uh, help improve, but these are things that are already in, in, in place. However, there are, um, area where, um, we need actually to have some enabling technology to be able to do what we want to do. So, for example, when we would like to take, uh, a need-based approach for GSG accounting, when we want to have an approach for GSG accounting that is based on consumption and not on production, we have a very, very important challenge because you will need to measure the carbon footprint of product using life cycle analysis. And uh, we do not know how to do it in a way that is transparent currently. So this is in this type of area where the new digital technologies such as blockchain can be extremely helpful. Thank you. Martine, you've also talked about the need for a uniform interoperable model of climate accounting. And how do you think we achieve that? And how do you see blockchain technology fitting into it? Thank you. And it's really a pleasure to join all of you in, in this panel. Uh, I'd probably start by saying there is a global accounting system and, and that is housed at the UNFCCC in some sense. Every country submits their inventories uh, abiding by the IPCC um, uh, guidelines. The issue, and that's the heart of the Paris Agreement, it, it pertains between sovereign nations, the parties to the UNFCCC, and the Secretariat, the UNFCCC. So what happens with companies? What happens with subnational governments? Uh, and, and even individuals, which are geographically nested within countries. So um, part of our work um, at, uh, at Yale and the Open Earth Foundation has been, we probably need to think about a nested climate accounting system where we were all housed within a broader uh, system, let's say a subnational government um, and the country. When it comes down to companies, uh, their operations can traverse multiple different regions. Uh, it, it is imperative to be able to create a lot more automation and efficiency in how uh, all this data aggregation works without creating double counting, um, that we we focus on the interoperability. And, and a lot of that work has is now leading to perhaps some of the core aspects of interoperability in blockchain, which is decentralized identifiers and verifiable credentials, which have the capacity to showcase something that historically has been really hard. How do you convey transparency alongside data privacy? And so when we're able to connect uh, the, the data from supply chains that Masama was describing, uh, understand the, the full footprint of a corporation and being able to verify that almost instantly by, by an auditor 
and then roll that data up into the jurisdiction in which those operations and that entity lies, it would simplify the process of creating uh, national, international inventories almost to an immediate level. And that's, it's almost like looking into the block explorer. Um, and and that, that's, I think, where, where we should be sort of aiming at all the tools that we have now in play. The, the challenge is putting them all together so we all speak the same language. So, Martin, what is also needed, of course, is innovation, right? There's so many different challenges, so many different aspects to this. How do we encourage that? How do we find a balance whereby we're encouraging this competitive drive to innovate, but at the same time maintain common standards that, as you say, roll up into this larger objective? Well, there's, there's many ways to answer that question. I think it's a, it's a, it's a great one. Um, first, we, I, I believe we all need to be part of the same system because we are part of the same system. We all, everything we do is housed within our atmosphere. Uh, so no matter what accounting we do, it all ends up into our, what we understand as our carbon budget. So once we're able to find a way in which individuals, companies, subnational governments, uh, uh, and, and sovereign nations are part of the same accounting and accountability network, probably that won't be housed um, in, in official settings. It has to be almost like an independent network. Um, probably the best way to tackle this is to have constant readability and consensus on the state of that carbon budget. And that is literally derived from the state of the art of science. Our network of sensors, they're to tell us uh, how much CO2 we can still put in the atmosphere. If we're able to map all of our, our ourselves as climate agents into an interoperable network and are able to derive information from the state of the planet, uh, there's all kinds of rule setting we could create, such as carbon pricing that's, that's defined by the physics of planet Earth, not, not, not purely uh, by uh, arbitrary sort of economic calculation. And I think that's, that's where a lot of the innovation uh, might lead. But to be able to achieve the, all of that, we require very robust open innovation frameworks, open source, understanding what we uh, often call beyond intellectual property into intellectual stewardship, intellectual stewardship agreement to, for planet Earth as a core digital infrastructure to be able to achieve all this. Masamba, clear, uh, clearly a, a critical part of this community is, of course, the public sector and governments, whether subnational or at the national level. How supportive are governments of making this information open and transparent and maybe even of using blockchain solutions? Yeah, it's clear that um, if we want to enhance uh, transparency, um, the digital technology can help a lot, particularly um, blockchain. So if you want to have uh, transparency at all level, meaning at the level of government, at the level of subnational, but also at the level of uh, uh, individual citizen who could be also a climate actor. And more importantly, if you want to give access to um, the climate action schemes as well as to the incentive to all type of uh, entities down to the level of, of individual, we need to have a, a robust transparent uh, system that will allow to measure the climate contribution of um, all these different entities, be it an, uh, um, um, a state, a nation, be it a subnational like, uh, like a city or an, an individual citizen. So, Masamba, in the crypto community, in the, there's a view that, uh, that open public blockchains are, are far better for driving innovation than closed private networks. But that's often a challenge for companies and for governments. How amenable are those entities to this idea of a public infrastructure? I think um, as long as the balance between transparency and uh, um, ensuring that um, um, confidentiality is not, there is no bridge to, to confidentiality is, is, is addressed. It's, it's, it's not an, 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 a big problem. Where I see more maybe um, an issue is this issue related to the consumption of, of, of energy. Um, in, in, um, when you have permission, uh, ledgers, um, 
it seems that the consumption of energy is much lower than in most of the um, open one. Um, but I think when it comes to transparency, um, it's as long as we can we can manage the the, the issue of confidentiality. It's everybody is uh, happy to have enhanced transparency. So, Martine, this is going to take a multi-stakeholder, ecosystem-wide effort. Uh, could you tell us briefly about the Open Earth Foundation's your collaborative approach to climate tech, and and do you think that these fiercely competitive tech providers are going to really be willing to come together and collaborate? Well, we have to. Uh, so, so we we come uh, with an ethos of radical collaboration. Our work uh, as a as a nonprofit was to establish uh, the important area of of research, development, design of open digital infrastructure for better earth system management. And, and not because that's something easy to do, particularly because it's hard and because we need it. Um, and we have to look at the earth system first and then being able to understand that in some ways, in the, particularly in the climate accounting space, a lot of entities and new startups are building their own websites, but they're not, no one's building the internet in some sense. This is just a, an analogy. And so it is very important that we, we draw out the lessons of the last couple of years in the distributed ledger technology space to say, how do we create that common infrastructure? The reason why I think uh, I'm optimistic that entities would collaborate is because we've also advanced a lot into how business models can, can be sitting on top of open source infrastructure. And so it's not either you, you define your business as open source or not, you can still have your proprietary enterprise grade solution sitting on top of an open source infrastructure that actually has the ability to establish queries and trust the information that your uh, app layer um, is providing through that, um, let's say zero knowledge proof information and verifiability. And it kind of links a bit to the other question of permission blockchains and permissionless. They have to all be part of a common system. And, as, and obviously in permission networks within supply chains, the trust between the parties that are relevant to it is very key, but then put together, all of that could be transparently reported, not into the raw data, but data derivatives into the permissionless um, infrastructure. 